Hi everyone. During these days, um, I have been getting a request and I have been getting comments and I have been getting calls from uh, people and they have been asking, hey, uh, we have been working on non-IT and we don't have a you know, IT background. So can we switch our career into DevOps? And if you want to switch our career into DevOps, so what all do we need to learn? What tools do we need to learn? What scripting do we need to learn? So these all uh, questions are coming and, you know, I thought to make a video on this and everybody can understand it. Really. So the answer for this, all the questions I'm going to cover in this video. And let's get started. So if you are working on non-IT, uh, you know, if you're working on different kind of sectors, whether it's a finance, automation, automobile industry, or uh, even if you're in medical industry, so you can switch your career into DevOps. So there is no uh, any stop for that. But if you want to switch your career into DevOps, so there are some, uh, you know, tools you have to be uh, adopting in your curriculum. So I'm going to list out all the tools and what you have to uh, adopt in your curriculum and what uh, all major tools are uh, used in current market. So first I would like to, um, you know, tell you, so if you want to switch your career into DevOps, the initial stage, uh, you have to, uh, you know, uh, learn about how the front end, how the back end, and how the databases get calls. So at least you should have uh, you know knowledge on how um, you know dynamic languages works and how the front end languages get designed and how a website get works. So these are the places you should be uh, you know get an idea on this. So to better start with that you know you can start with a Java and you can take a Java project you can you know, deep dive into the code, you can understand how this Java has been working. And, you know, for front end, you can take Angular or front end, you can take uh, React. So you can take any other uh, front end, uh, you know, uh, frameworks. So first, uh, just understand how this, you know, website has been working and how uh, HTTP calls has been uh, coming from the client and how the server has been giving response to that. So why I'm specifying this, like, you know, to understand how the website works, because of, as a DevOps engineer, you will work to make automation of entire deployments. So that's where, you know, you are going to uh, play a very crucial role in the pipelines. So first start with the Java. So in a Java, you don't need to code like a developer. It doesn't require for DevOps. But you should understand how a Java code works. So let's example in the back end, you may use any kind of you know framework to write the Java code. But you should fair understand how the back end uh, calls has been going to the databases. So these are the things you just have to get a knowledge on this. So for understanding databases, you can start with SQL or SQL. And we have a different type of databases in the market, but start with SQL in the basic. And you can understand how the you know, database calls are coming from Java and how the communication is happening in between your backend and frontend and the databases. So that's what I uh, want to tell you, like, you know, if you have fair knowledge on Java, so you can understand what is the backend. And you can you can you can you know uh, learn about the front end technology. It's, it's not a complete learning. Just understand how the front end works. And the next one is a database. So you can ask me a question: Do we really need to learn this all the concept like Java, SQL, back end, front end data? So the answer for if you are switching your career from non-IT to IT, so first you need to understand how a programming language writes, I mean, how a developer can write a programming language and how it gets implemented in, a, in its local laptop and how it is get built, how it is get packaged. And if you get applied into the production environment, so how a user requests for the particular service and how it gets the reply back to his uh, you know, browser. So this is where you just have to know how this all the languages works. But you, you don't require the you know, knowledge like a developer or any other uh, you know, uh, software kind of stuff. You just need to understand how this all the programming languages works. That's all. And um, if you are stepping into DevOps, but you know, uh, we have a set of um, methodologies, 
all the methodologies have worked on the tools. So I'm going to list out what all major tools our DevOps engineer should have in his curriculum. And you know, uh, if if you have this set of tools in your uh, resume, uh, for sure you are going to get uh, you know calls from recruiters and you get recruited by any uh, employer. So I'm going to list out all the major tools. Uh, if you are looking your job, you know. Um, you know, job switching into DevOps from non-IT to IT, or if you're working already in a uh, software developer or a database engineer or database administrator. So we have different kinds of roles. And if you want to transition your career into DevOps, so you're going to uh, have all these uh, tools under your resume or skill set. So I'm going to start first one is, uh, you know, the, the first major one is a Linux. So, the, the reason why I have written Linux because of you know uh, you know mostly we have been working on Linux kernels on uh, you know in terms of DevOps automations because of like you know we are not going to use uh, Windows for deployments but we may use it but you know I, I as per my experience in IT most of the you know software uh, companies do use a uh, Linux uh, Linux kernel for deploying of their applications. So in Linux, we have different kinds of flavors like we have Ubuntu, we have a CentOS, we have a Fedora, and we have a Parrot, and we have a Kali. So these all are uh, flavors we can use as per requirement. And you just have to understand how this Linux works and uh, how the networking works in Linux and how you can create a files and how you can give permissions, how you can you know um, give a how you can create a users and you know uh, you, you just have to understand how the Linux kernel works in terms of you know deployment. So once you have a fair knowledge in Linux, so the second part, like you have to uh, have in your uh, curriculum or resume, the second skill was in terms of source code management. So source code management, like, you know, if you ask me, hey, what kind of source code management do I learn? So in the market, uh, we can see we have a wide range of source, of source code management tools are available. But as a beginner, I do suggest you to start with the GitHub. So GitHub is a tool where you can store your uh, code and you can version it as per the releases. So if you have a set of versions and if you want to make a deployable into your environment, so you can use a GitHub and you know GitHub is going to be a remote repository too and you know uh, you can create an organization and you can give access to a set of people where they can you know where they they only have access to your uh, um, you know, uh, the remote repository. So repository here is a set of place where you have keep all your source code. So you should, you should, you should have a knowledge on how, uh, you know, source code management such as GitHub works and how you can create a branches and how you can raise a MRs and how you can commit it and, you know, how you can get, uh, clone it in your local, how you can customize it, how you can push back same to the repository. And these all are, you should have a fair knowledge on uh, source code management, which is a uh, GitHub. So GitHub is uh, you know, going to play a very crucial role in your DevOps uh, methodology because of that's the way you start your uh, first automation task and till end. So GitHub is uh, you know, going to be a very crucial role and entire CACD pipelines. So I'm going to list out the second uh, skill, which is uh, GitHub. Fine. Um, Let's example like you have uh, you know adopted this skill in your uh, uh, skill under the skills. So what's next? So being a DevOps engineer, so you should have fair knowledge on automation. So how we can make automating automation deployment in production or any developer environment. So for that, you should have uh, you know uh, uh, tool skills such as a CI/CD, and we can call it as a continuous integration deployment and delivery. So about the CI/CD, I have uh, you know. Uh, talk in uh, previous uh, videos. So just go and watch the videos, how the CACD works and all those things. But in terms of CACD, if you want to adopt the skill, so the most of the tools are uh, use, uh, most of the tools are available in the current market. But if you if you are if you can see like you know, hey, I am a beginner. How can I, which which tool I, I can I can pick up and start it? So I just suggest you to start with Jenkins. So Jenkins is a user friendly, and if you are a beginner and you can easily create a jobs. And you can create, easily create uh, slaves for your runners, uh, slaves as runners, so you can configure it and you can run all the automation task. So for uh, CACD pipeline uh, to enable all the CACD jobs, so I suggest you to learn with the Jenkins. Fine. So here you have learned about uh, Jenkins. 
and you have a fair knowledge on uh, uh, you know how you can enable all the CD pipeline and like how do you write uh, the uh, pipeline as a code. So if you are using a Java or if you are using .NET, if you are using any uh, um, you know uh, build tool or uh, the language which you use for compilation, so you should you should you should require a tool for uh, you know make it as a build and make it as a packageable. Which means like let's example you have a Java and it should be compiled right, and you know if you have a compiled it, so you should be packaged it in terms of deployment. So for that all this requirement, so you do require a tool for doing all this task. So in the market, we do have uh, several tools are available, but most uh, and, uh, widely used tools are Maven. So you should have uh, you know, knowledge on Maven, how the Maven works and what all the goals are used in terms of Maven builds and how Maven can be used for uh, you know, project management. So it's not a necessary to learn Maven. If you are working on Python, you don't require a build tool. But if you are, if you have a receiver project where all the developer works on Java, so you should have a knowledge on Maven. So I'm just giving option uh, for this tool. If you are uh, really into Java, and you know, if you are all the pipelines, and if you are doing automation on Java, so you should require a build tool or a project management tool called as a Maven. So I'm going to list it down as optional, but it's up to you, like whether you want to learn it. But uh, I, I do say that most of the companies have been using Java widely, and you know, it's better to have the school uh, this skill under your uh, you know, skill set. So the fourth one is Maven. Fine. So you have a you know project management or build tool, uh, and you know you do know how to build it with a CI/CD pipeline by using Jenkins. And after that, you know, it's up to you like whether you are going to deploy directly into the server, uh, you know, is there a web application server or anywhere. So it's up to you like you know you may use a Tomcat or you may use Nginx for deployments. But after that, like you know, we have a two types of deployments in uh, you know DevOps, which is a package-based deployment. Which means, like you know, you do have a GitHub and you do have a Jenkins and you do have a Maven. You directly deploy into the targeted server by you know packaged your artifact. And if you are uh, uh, DevOps automation is rely on container based, like it, which means like you have a source code has split into the different microservices. These all the microservices contact within your environment. So that case is to manage your uh, source code and if you want to isolate your source code. So you should have a skill set which is related to the containerization. So the tool that we use widely use in the market for containerization, which is a uh, Docker. So I'm going to mention the major and uh, the widely used tool. And if you are switching your career from non IT to uh, non IT to DevOps, so most of the interviewers starts few. And I did see a few interviews. They directly start their questions from Docker. They doesn't cover these all those tools, which are which are you know which are more uh, pillars for DevOps. But they may raise the questions from directly DevOps, uh, directly from the Docker. So Docker is a backbone for all these say, CD pipelines. So I'm going to list out this tool as a fifth one. So you should have a knowledge on Docker and how Docker works and how the Docker networking and how you can enable your uh, you know source code into uh, image and how you can uh, convert image into a container, how you can log in into the container, so how to get the logs inside of the container. And if you have an issue with the container, so how can stop the container and how you can expose the container with the port uh, mapping. So in, in, a, in a Docker, you should you should how to learn all those thing concept and you know you should get the fair knowledge on it. On this, so fine. Like you know, we have covered uh, very basic things. If you want to start your career from non IT to IT into DevOps, and you know, we we listed out the Linux, GitHub, and uh, Jenkins, and Maven, and Docker. So let's example. Uh, you have step into the organization where uh, you know you have hundreds of microservices as hosted in Docker. So for managing all the Docker containers, so you should require one uh, tool to you know make a drivenable. Or make it as a drivable. So the tool for orchestration uh, in the market, uh, and we have a different uh, several tools. Uh, mostly uh, used tools in the market are uh, Kubernetes, or we can use a Docker Swarm. I can use OpenShift. But as a beginner, I do suggest you to start your career with uh, you know Kubernetes, because of Kubernetes is open source. You can you can you know download into your Windows machine or Linux machine, and you can practice as per your uh, you know skill set. So the sixth tool I'm going to mention under this skill set, which is a uh, Kubernetes. 
Fine, like you know, we have covered all the major tools uh, that are required to get a job in DevOps, and if you are a beginner, so you should start your career from, uh, you know, from day one to learn all these set of tools. But hey, uh, you know, you can ask me the question. Hey, recent days we have been uh, uh, hearing the word called as cloud computing. So, do we re really require to learn cloud computing? So the answer is yes, because of you know the you know. Uh, the employers has been uh, looking for a candidate who, I mean, uh, the companies has been looking for a candidate who has a knowledge on the cloud computing. So if you are a beginner, you don't need to worry about it, local cloud computing much, up, much, but you should know how, you know, you can enable a one uh, infrastructure in a cloud computing. So you just start your uh, journey with the AWS because of AWS is a beginner friendly. You can start your uh, you know journey in AWS. Just learn it how you can create the virtual private clouds and how you can create the instances as which we call as virtual machines and you know how you can do the load balancing because of these all the topics are happening in our you know on premises data centers which means like you know the company only purchase the uh, you know the physical virtual uh, physical machines and they do all these sort of tasks. But you know what happened? You know the companies has to pay more on it. That's why most of the companies have been uh, migrating from on-premise data data center to cloud, cloud-based technologies. So that's where, as a DevOps engineer, you should have a knowledge on cloud computing. So how we can create a virtual machine? So how we can make auto scale it? Or how we can make a balancing the load in between? Or if you have a cluster of uh, instances, how can um, you know how we can uh, transfer the load as a gradually and how can split the traffic equally to the all instances. So, and you know, as a, as I mentioned cloud computing, so you should have fair knowledge on how you can enable the firewalls on your uh, you know, infrastructure, how you can create the rules. So let's say example, there is a request that has been coming from US. So how you can give access for that request. And let's say example, there is a request is coming from Pakistan. So we don't want to allow that uh, request into our server. So how you are going to block such type of IP addresses. So you should have all the knowledge on, on this. Uh, and you, know, you, should, you should know how to, how to enable all these services to make your automation deployable. So the seventh uh, tools I'm going to list out, which is uh, AWS. So you should have a um, knowledge on cloud computing. That's where you know uh, it's benefit for your uh, you know resume. And you know uh, because of you know I I did see a few companies that does not uh, hire uh, separately for cloud engineers. So they do give us this responsibility for DevOps engineers. So it's good to have these AWS in your resume. And the next one, like you know, uh, uh, I did. I I get a I get a request from few people. Hey, uh, you know, fine. We have learned all this set of tools that you have listed, but do we really really require to learn programming? Like, like example, I did say about the programming is a Java, but so you don't need to learn about programming of Java, but you should really re, uh, require to learn few uh, programming languages which are uh, really used for automations. Those pro programming languages are the Next one is a uh, Scheller Bash scripting, and the ninth one is a uh, Python. So you can ask me a question: Hey, you have given me two. Uh, um, you have listed on two uh, programming languages. Do we really need to learn these two programming languages? So didn't you mention extra in your uh, in this uh, you know uh, list of tools? So I can say like, you know, you can start with the shell scripting, uh, but you know, what industries are looking like, you know, if you have a knowledge on shell scripting, you can automate the stuff on pipeline level and you can run all the automation script. But let's example, you have a, a hundreds of servers and you want to make a, a servers visualization or, you know, if you want to uh, copy a file from one, uh, one server to another server, so, and if we want to read the data which is available on one particular server and you want to make a filters on automation. So, these are places you should really have a knowledge on dynamic languages. So, you know, in a market, most prop, most popular languages are available. So, in that I am going to mention the, the most uh, dynamic language is a Python. So, yeah, like, you know, you should have a fair knowledge in Python, like, you know, how we can automate the stuff in between the two servers. And you know, as I mentioned, if you want to copy a content from one server to another server, or if you want to make any dynamic automations, so those are places this Python works. 
but it's not mandatory uh, to learn python but during these days uh, all the companies are looking for a candidate who has a knowledge in python automations so i have covered all the you know necessary tools uh, if you want to switch your career from normal uh, non it guy to uh, you know it guy especially in devops and you know i have mentioned all the required major majorly used tools in the market and if i forget something drop me in a comment section i know we can make the video on particular tools also but uh, if if you are uh, if you have asked me question hey uh, these if i learn these all the tools can i get placed so i can say for sure uh, because of these all tools are widely used in the current market and if you go now create and just randomly uh, filter for uh, any uh, devops uh, engineer job so you you do find these all the tools are listed at over there but there are few other tools as as more advanced like uh, you know we have a terraform like you know where you can automate all your uh, infrastructure as a code for aws and we can use for azure and we can use for gcp as a google cloud and we have aws like configuration management tool like you know uh, you know if you have a set up or uh, hundreds of servers on aws and if you want to make a, a manageable in between all the servers so you should you should have one configuration management tool so and you know we have other tools for kubernetes like you know in the last video we had discussed about argo cd and we have uh, linkerd and for service mesh and we have uh, ishtios also ishtio and we have a uh, uh, tools for monitoring like splunk and we have a prometheus and grafana but those are tools are uh, in terms of few advanced level like you know if you if you uh, keep those tools in your uh, list so you cannot finish your devops journey as quickly but you can learn those tools parallelly while you have been uh, learning all those things but i have listed at all the tools which are necessary to crack your interview uh, from you know whether it is non it to it or if you are from it background like if you are working as a devops or a, sorry developer or a database engineer or a back end engineer or a front end or you know i did see few people are working for only linux administrations say uh, you know that case is the guy will well known about linux but if you want to start his start his career in devops so he has to cover all this set of tools and you know you should get a good knowledge on these tools uh, and if you want to crack the exam so i'm going to stop this video over here and you know i have uh, hope this video helps for you to switch your career into devops and you know um that's all so feel free to uh, you know drop me in comment section if i forget something and like this video subscribe to the channel and you know press the bell icon also for your further videos in the future and thank you stay safe